period of consecration into my heart into my heart come into my heart Lord Jesus
righteousness than all the other things that is distracting us will be added lord you are my number one hallelujah, hallelujah. let's just talk to the lord at this time hallelujah. hallelujah thank you jesus oh god we love you 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 oh god we are weak but you are strong 
Lord Jesus, show yourself strong in our lives. Let when others look at us, they see, O oh God, that we belong to your kingdom. When they even see our very appearance, when they see our faces, when they see our attitude, O oh God, they will see that we belong to you. They will see that we are one of your followers, Lord Jesus. O oh God, even in this meeting, O oh God, as we come, O oh God, to learn how to be better kingdom citizens. I pray, oh God, that we will not leave this meeting the same. I pray, oh God, that our mind will be changed, our insight will be changed, our outlook, and how to be kingdom citizens and how to live with each other as brothers and sisters, that it will be transformed. Be with us in this service. Bless everything that happens tonight. Lord Jesus, let your Shekinah glory show up and dominate the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. We claim the victory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. At this time, our choir will be marching in. Our choir. Praise the Lord, everybody. We look like we're going to be uh, a bumper crowd tonight asking some of our folks to just go upstairs and allow the visitors the sanctuary. All right? So Elder Murdoch will direct you. All right? So if he comes to you, please uh, uh, obey him and just go upstairs so we can give our visitors the sanctuary. All right? Is that all right? Come on, you're not speaking to me. Is it all right? Amen. God bless you. Amen, our choir. We are going up, choir. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer in the name of the Lord. Sing, we are going up.
God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you in your war clothes tonight? Are you ready for war? We are not going to get the victory without a fight. Amen. We have to go up and we have to take it by force. Hallelujah. This time we'll ask Bishop Williams to bless tonight's service in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your great name tonight. We thank you for allowing us the privilege, the opportunity to come again into the house of the Lord. Like David, we will enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we will come into your courts with praise and be thankful unto you. God, you have blessed us tremendously in our worship service. You have spoken to our hearts with the rich word of God. And now we have come for a double portion of what you have to give to us tonight. And so, God, we give this service to you. We pray, God, that your name and your name alone will be lifted up on I. We pray, God, that you sit upon this service, that you will anoint us afresh. Remember our speaker tonight, God. We pray for a fresh anointing, God, to be released upon him tonight. I pray that as the words go forth, yokes will be destroyed. Burdens will be removed. Those who are bound will be delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we declare in this service tonight that souls are going to leave here speaking in tongues and giving God the glory and the praise. We declare, God, that souls are going to be saved. And so we ask that your will be done. And that your kingdom will come in Jesus name we pray. And all God's people shout amen. Amen. We'll sing our hymn for the night. He brought me out. Hallelujah. He brought me out. My heart was distressed. Need Jehovah dread found. And low in the pit where my sins had me down. I cry to the Lord from the deep miry clay who tenderly brought me out to gold and he brought me out of the miry clay he set my feet on a rock to stay he put a song in my soul Truth and trust 
in God. He brought me out of the mire. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. A song of praise, Hallelujah. I'll sell of the pit with his gloom and despair. I praise the Father who answered my prayer. I sing my new song. Glory and love and joy in the doors with the saints above. Jesus. Our theme tonight is the redemption of the kingdom and our, our nice lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15 reading from verses 1 to 24 and we'll ask this beautiful young man of God to come and read for us his brother Akeem Blake make him welcome. Praise the name of Jesus, everybody. Praise the name of Jesus, everybody. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Jesus, hallelujah. We will be reading alternately and I will begin. Here begin it. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. 
by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen above of five hundred at, at once, of whom the greater part remain unto his present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed unto me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it, be, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no persecution of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he, has, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For I am Adam and die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. 24, and we'll read together. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Here in the portion of God's holy reading. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. At this time, our choir will be doing their theme song, after which the next voice you will hear will be our night's moderator. Elder Horace Murdoch. God bless you. Savior crucified, sing 
Hallelujah. Can I invite you to stand with me everywhere? If you're sitting, I'm going to invite you to stand with me. We are here to worship the Lord tonight. I wonder if everybody is in agreement with me. I said we are here to worship the Lord tonight. Oh, and do I have a witness in the house that our God is an awesome God? And we didn't just come to church tonight. We didn't just come to convocation, but we came to worship our God. Oh, I want you to open your mouth and lift up your voices. And dig deep in you and find a praise. Somebody ought to think of God's goodness. Think of God's grace. Think of God's working in our life. And shout a hallelujah in the house. Oh, let, the, let Vineyard Town know that we are here tonight. Let the enemy know that we are here tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible declares that Israel went to war. 
and the, and the war was against them but when they when they sent for the for the ark of the covenant the bible said when the ark of the covenant came into the camp they shouted with a shout that the earth rang can can we shout tonight praise the name of the lord can we really shout tonight and let oh god almighty i feel god in this place i feel god in this place and sometimes somebody needs to understand the enemy wants you to go quiet the enemy wants you to go silent but your breakthrough is wrapped up in your praise and somebody needing a breakthrough tonight need to dig deep and find a praise find the loudest praise find the heaviest praise and open your mouth and shout somebody ought to believe god before you get to the victory somebody waiting on a breakthrough but you've got to learn to praise god before the breakthrough comes Ah, oh, is there anybody in this place who is desperate? Some desperate people tonight. The psalmist declares, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord. And he heard me. He heard me. I said, he heard me. I wonder if somebody need a breakthrough. Touch somebody beside them. Tell them, he'll hear you. Talk to the person beside you. Tell them, he'll hear you. Because sometimes, 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 I'm too desperate to be dignified. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody. I can't be nice when I'm desperate. When I'm desperate, I've got to dig deep. and sh I'm not caring about who is going to be hearing me. Because I'm desperate. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Is there any desperate person in the house tonight? Oh, God Almighty. Somebody who's not caring what the neighbor is going to think. Somebody who needs a miracle. And you don't care how they're going to look at you. Because nobody knows like you know. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody. I'm too desperate to be dignified. I'm too desperate to be nice. And I've got... Ah, oh. oh, praise the name of the Lord. What an awesome God we serve. Somebody just think of God's goodness. Just for a minute. Think of God's working in your life. Think of the times he brought you through. Think of the times he's been, he showed up for you. In your midnight season, at the crossroad of your life, when the storm was raging, I wonder if I'm talking to somebody. I wish I had some real people who had been through some real stuff. Some people who, are, who, who have proven God. Some people who have a real testimony. You didn't just hear about God, but God has been... Can you think of his working in your life? And just for a minute, disregard the person beside you. And just thank him. It must have been God. Do I have a witness in the house? Is there anybody in the house tonight who's been through some stuff? And you know you, you, it is not because of your abilities that you made it over. It is not because of your goodness that you made it through. It's not because you were right than anybody else were you. Oh God Almighty. It is only because of the goodness of God. It was God who brought me over. It was God who brought me through. It was God who showed up. Oh God Almighty, when I didn't know what to do, what my next step was going to be, what my next plan was going to be, I was out of ideas, but it was God. It must have been God. Do I have a witness in the house? I said, it must have been God. Somebody shout hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What an awesome presence. The song writer puts it like this. He says, I, lo I love the feel that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. And I'm excited tonight to be in the company of God's people because I'm expecting a move from God. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. We didn't just come to church. We came to see God move. I didn't just come to church, but I came to hear from God. I wonder if I'm talking to somebody. I said, I came for a word. And every time God brings us together, there's a word in the house. Touch somebody and tell them there's a word in the house. There's a word in the house. You didn't come to hear from the preacher. You came to hear from God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let me, let me use this opportunity to acknowledge and to greet our Bishop, Bishop C.A. Holsworth. Praise the name of the Lord. Bishop Carter, Pastor Maxwell, Bishop Williams. I, 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 I hope I'm not... All, God, all the ministers, all the pastors, bishops, officers, all God's wonderful people visiting friends. Those who are perhaps here for the first time. We welcome you to Greater Grace Temple, to our convocation 2024. And, and God has been good to us for the past few days since Thursday, Thursday night. God has been moving. God has been speaking. If you were here, you missed it. If you weren't here, you missed it. But I said, we have been, we have been hearing from God. 
God has been speaking to us. And we know God isn't through with us yet. We are expecting a word from God tonight. We are expecting a move from God tonight. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue tomorrow. Tomorrow is our men's day. And, and I thought, where are the men in the house? Can I hear the men in the house shout hallelujah? I think we can do better than that. You, you, I, I, I miss, you missed me that time. But every man in the house. Can I invite the men in the house to stand? I know it's ladies night you know, and, and we're not trying to steal your thunder. <laughs> every man in the house. Is there a man in, another man in the house? Every man in the house standing. After three. One, two, three. Let's shout hallelujah. Yeah, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You may be seated men. But tomorrow we continue. It's our men's day. We, we begin at 10.30 in the morning. And you don't want to miss. We have some wonderful men of God with the word of God in the house tomorrow. And you don't want to miss that. Our worship is going to be excellent. There's something about different about when men lead in worship. Sisters, we, we love when you are there. We, we can't make it without you. But there's something different about when men lead worship. And so I, I don't want you to miss that. We begin at 10.30 10 tomorrow morning. We continue into the afternoon with our main workshop and our main speaker. And we come back in the evening for our, our service. And tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night is the final night of the feast. It's, it's funny how time flies when you're having fun. It seems we just started yesterday. And, and we have gone several days. But, but tomorrow you don't want to miss tomorrow night. T touch your neighbor beside you and tell him, don't miss tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow. You don't want to miss that. Praise the name of the Lord. We, we, it, it's somehow kind of funny because today is ladies' day. And you're wondering if it's ladies' day or, or is it that I am moderating? <laughs> but, but, but I want you to understand. We complement each other. The Bible in Genesis, the Bible says that everything God created, God said it was good. The first time God said it was not good is when he said it was not good for man to be alone. <laughs> and so we can't, ladies, we can't make it without you. And so we are supporting you tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. I said we are supporting you tonight. If you are sitting, every man, if you are sitting beside a lady, a sister, tell, touch her and tell her we are supporting you tonight. And, and support is not just word of mouth. It has to be tangible. So, so if you have already spoken it, then you'll have to back it up. When the time comes, when the time comes, when the time comes, and the time is coming. Can I invite you to stand with me one more time? We are here to worship the Lord tonight. Are you excited to be in the company of God's people? Are you excited to, to, to expend your energy in the worship of God? Praise the name of the Lord. Everybody is standing with me. We are here to magnify the Lord. We are here to magnify the Lord. We are here to magnify the Lord. Can I, while you're coming to your feet, while you're coming to your feet, I want to ask members of our own congregation our home church if you are occupying a seat and somebody else is standing a visitor is standing can, can, can i ask you to be hospitable and to give them your seat and we can sit on the ball it, it is our home this is our house and we treat strangers well i said we, we treat strangers well we are an hospitable church so, so, so i'm going to ask you if, if if you can just kindly Quietly, take a space on the balcony and, and, and allow our visitors to be comfortable. It would be greatly appreciated. Praise the name of the Lord. Touch somebody beside you and tell them we are here to worship. You're not talking to the person beside you. I said, touch this person beside you and tell them we are here to worship. Oh, we are here to magnify the Lord. There's something, there's something about worship that is a great equalizer. David was the king, but the Bible said when he brought up the harp, oh, praise the name of the Lord, the king stripped himself of his kingly robe and he became like any other it's time to worship it's time to worship we're going to lose everything in worship to almighty god sister cotna is coming sister cotna is coming sister cotna is coming and she's going to lead us into a time of worship and praise praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord in the meantime can i just invite you lift up your hands and begin to magnify the lord somebody just begin to shout hallelujah in the house Talk to the, your God. Talk to your God. We are here to God. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're excellent, God. 
Oh Lord God Almighty, if it had not been for you who was on my side, I thank you. Oh God Almighty, for the times you have showed up in my life. I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what you are about to do. Oh God Almighty, I'm going to praise you because you're a God of your word. What you say you will do, that you will do. And I'm going to praise you until my breakthrough comes. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord. Let us worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. I feel like, I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. I feel like, I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, Run away. skipping. Skip away. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. Redemption coming. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful freedom. Glory to His name. Each day, 
worship him oh we worship you God we worship you we adore you King Jesus we adore you King Jesus we magnify your name because you're an excellent God hallelujah 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 let us just lift our hands and just praise his name let us just lift our hands and just magnify King Jesus tonight hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands uh, across this room tonight uh, and just worship our God 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 tonight. Glory! We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I say of the Lord that He is my refuge. In Him will I put all of my trust he's taken me daily from glory to glory in him will i trust in him will i trust some trust some trust in chariots yes some trust Oh, but I remember the name of my life. Oh, for he is a warrior, and yes, he is. Yes, he is mighty. In him, him will I trust. Oh, in him will I trust. My defense, 
thunder, my shield and baller. My hope is built, yes, firmly on Him, on mountains and valleys. My God is before me. So in Him will I trust, Him will I trust, some trust in chariots, yes in some, but as for me and my house, I will
and intents of our hearts. Somebody reflect on God's goodness. And whatsoever it is that is preventing you or makes you think that you can't worship God right now. Somebody ought to be confident in our God that the storm won't last. It won't be like this always. Somebody ought to believe God that it's turning around for me. I wonder if I, I wonder if somebody wants to trust God tonight. Believe God tonight. It's turning around for me. The songwriter says it won't be like this always. The storm won't last. But you have got to learn to praise God in the midst of the storm. Somebody's waiting on the storm to cease. But right there in the midst of what you're going through. Unplanned for and unforeseen eventualities will find us. But somebody tonight ought to praise God in the midst of what you're going through. And believe God that for your breakthrough, He's going to turn it around for you. Somebody believe God do I have a witness in the house tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. At this time our bishop is coming with the greetings and introductions in Jesus name. Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord everybody. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. What a time we're having. What a time we're having. In the house of the Lord, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm pleased to meet you. Come on. Take a little time to fellowship a little bit. Make acquaintance. Tell him your name. Amen. Tell him who you are. Come on. Talk to your neighbor, man. Tell him who you are. I wish him kingdom greetings. The greetings we have your greater grace. For this year's kingdom greetings. Amen. Because we are people of the kingdom. Amen. We are not church members. We are kingdom citizens. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise. So tell somebody I'm not a church member. I'm a kingdom citizen. Amen. Hallelujah. So as citizens of the kingdom I have rights and privileges. 
as kingdom citizens. I'm not sure about church membership. Because you have high and low members. You have back bench members. Front members. Floor members. I don't know where they get these things from. But it comes into the Christian faith. But I'm a citizen of the kingdom. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise. And put your hand together and bless the name of God. And that makes every one of us in this room, in God's sight, equal. Amen. We might have different roles. Yes, we have the role of the leadership. That doesn't make us different from you. Just a different role. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise. Put your hand together and bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we see ourselves in that, in that light, then we have, amen, we have a better understanding of what God has called us to do as kingdom citizens. A few weeks ago, I preached a sermon, the expansion of the kingdom, and that God gave the Holy Spirit not to speak in tongues, uh -oh, but to empower you to win another citizen of the kingdom. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise. If you read Acts 1 and 8, you'll realize why we got the Holy Ghost the way we did. The question was asked of Jesus. When will you restore the kingdom to Israel? So the Holy Ghost is kingdom business. Come on, tell your name. It's kingdom business. Not church business. When will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And then the answer for Jesus was astounding. He said, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father's put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me. And watch this, because they were wanting to restore the kingdom to Israel locally. But he says, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and you shall be witnesses of me in Judea, in Jerusalem, in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Oh, come on. This is a global kingdom. Come on, lift your hands and give God a praise. Oh, you're not clapping like you know what I'm talking about. I'm not preaching, but I just want to understand the concept of what we are on a mission we're on tonight. Every ruler in this world is on a borrowed throne. A borrowed throne. God gave him that throne and God can take away that throne anytime. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise. Because there's one king over all the kings. Hallelujah. Revelation said, I saw written on his thigh as Jesus, king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise. You have to get accustomed to the fact that we're king. And that's why people are not coming to church the way they could, they should. Because we're offering them a powerless church. When they want to see a kingdom with power. The Bible said the kingdom comes with power. When the Bible speaks about kingdom, it's speaking of power. And this church has power. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God a praise. Tell your neighbor, we have power. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you should shout even more than that. We have power. And tonight we come to empower some other folks. You don't have the Holy Ghost. Get the power tonight and become a kingdom citizen. Come on and give God a praise. Get baptized in Jesus' name tonight and become... A citizen of the kingdom. The Lord bless you. Let me greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time on this penultimate day of the conference 2024. Started on Thursday night and Friday and yesterday as we celebrate our prayer breakfast. Those of you who were not there, you missed that event. Amen. We celebrated that in style in our 5,000 square feet facility 
in Portmore. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise and put your hands together and bless the name of God. Thank God for the grace of God and the favor of God on greater grace. Little greater grace is able to do all of that by the grace of God. Come on and shout hallelujah. Give God praise for us, man. Come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what we do for greater grace, we do for all of Pentecost. What we do for greater grace, we do for all of apostolic. What we do for greater grace, we do for all church. Come on and lift your hands and give God a praise. Put your hands together and bless the name of God. We're just given this assignment by God. To be, to carry, amen, to carry out this assignment for the kingdom of God. And we thank the Lord. Amen. There's silence, but we're going to praise God anyhow. Amen. I think I want someone to help me take off the dumb spirit in the church tonight. Come on, lift your hands and give God a praise. Loose your mouth and begin to open your mouth and praise God, man. Take off the dumb spirit tonight. We got to get this dumb spirit out of the church tonight. Come on, everybody. Rostrum, let us get off the dumb spirit. Come on, ministers. Jump up on your feet and begin to praise God so we get off the dumb spirit. Hallelujah. We curse every dumb spirit right now in Jesus' name. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Speak life to somebody beside you. And if somebody don't like it, say, excuse me, please. I have to open my mouth and praise the Lord. Every time you begin to praise God, the devil is upset. When Jesus was going into Jerusalem, the people got up. There's where the people who exp experienced the power of the kingdom. Some were healed. Some were delivered from demonic positions. They got palm branches and began to wave as Jesus went through going into Jerusalem and the demonic men and women get up and say oh, tell your people to hold their peace Jesus said if these would hold their peace the rocks would cry out come on somebody tonight tonight never will a rock never will a rock cry out in my place Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Never will a rock cry out in my place! If these would hold their peace, the rocks would cry out. Someone praise God. Somebody lift your hands and give Him praise. So tonight we come, tell your neighbor, talk to your neighbor right now, and say, neighbor, we come to silence the rocks. Glory! We come to silence the rocks. Never, never, never. Will a rock grow out in my place? I don't go to churches to just look around and wonder what's going on. We're glad for the support from everybody. But when you come to Greater Grace, we ask you, worship with us. Come on and bless the name of God. Don't look around. Let's worship with us. Hallelujah. Worship with us. Strengthen us in worship. Oh, come on and bless God somebody. Worship with us. Worship with us.
I feel like doing this. Stop. Stop checking us out. Stop checking us out. Praise God with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When I go to church, I go to worship. I don't go to preach. If they ask me to preach, it's all right. But my duty is to worship. Somebody makes us a fuss about it, Bishop. Well, I've got to make a fuss. When you think of who I am and where I'm coming from. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he had done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Thank God! Will a rock come on? Never will a rock cry out in my place. Never will a rock come out. Come on, sing it. Tell your neighbor that. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Please forgive me. I'm asked to greet, but I feel strongly that we need to praise God and so that we understand exactly why we're here. In the name of Jesus. Convocation is the highest form of fellowship. Amen. Don't have convocation all the time. And we want to thank God for all those who are supporting us tonight. Put your hand together for all of our pastors and leaders. I don't know if we have captured them all. But we're going to mention those whom we have listed here. And perhaps there are others who are coming in. Praise God. But we have amen, Pastor Joseph Lee from the Greater, Christ, uh, Greater Apostolic Christ Temple uh, Ministries in Central Village. Come on. Praise God. God bless you. 
Eloli. Amen. And we're so happy for him doing a great job over there. Amen. Elorine Ramsey from and Lady Ramsey. Are you here? Elo Ramsey and Lady Ramsey. Where are you? Where? Okay, down the back. Put your hand together for them, right? Don't right on the back. God bless you. Yes, and they're from from Hope United. We have people from Hope United. Are you from Hope United? Folks from Hope, yes, Hope United. No, Hope United. We have folks from Hope United. Are you here? Hope United Church. Just raise your hand if you're here from Hope United. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Put your hand together for these people. Come on, as we call the names. Amen. Put your hand together. Praise God. We have Elder Cole. Amen. And his family, they are here for Missions for Christ. Elder Cole, please stand. Now, Missions for Christ, don't let the name fool you. Missions for Christ is in New York. And is also where Elder uh, Evangelist El Ellerine Dixon is from. This is my, this is the elder of the church. Amen. And the name, Mission for Christ, is their name, registered name. But they are part of Greater Grace Temple. Come on, put your hand together and bless the name of the Lord. I'm not one of those ministers who when I have affiliation, I ask people to take off their name and put Greater Grace. It doesn't really matter. Come on, lift your hands and give God a praise. Oh, hallelujah. So we have a lot of affiliates around the world that, amen, partner with us. And this great man, amen, has been a great partner in ministry here at Greater Grace. We started a little program up in Kitsentown. How many remember that? A training center. And they still have the training center. Anybody here who know the training center? Shout out, man. All right, good. And we trained about, we trained a number of electricians at the center and gave them their tools. Ella Cole sent the tool sets for each electrician, praise God, to go out and work in the field. So we have, amen, support from our overseas partners in a real way, in a tangible way. Come on and give God praise. Thank you, Ella Cole. You're very much a part of this ministry. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the Apostolic Church of Higher Dimension in C here. And they are led tonight by, amen, the bishop of that church, praise God, just, in fact, last Saturday I had a funeral service here. I mean, I remember that. Ella sent his father, passed, and we sent him home on Saturday. And then Saturday evening we had to go to C here. And to consecrate this gentleman, please stand, sir. As a newly consecrated bishop of the Apostolic Church of Higher Dimensions. Come on, lift your hands and give God a praise. Put your hands together and bless the name of God. And at the same time, to install him as a pastor of the church. So we did that job and come up back. We were tired, but we didn't mind doing it. Then we went back on Tuesday, night, Tuesday and did their Bible study for their convocation. Praise the name of God. But when I was coming up, my God, I had everything in the back of the car. Tomatoes, melon, scallion, all kind of things for the convocation. So those of you who are, amen, enjoy the convocation. These are some of the people that are responsible for that. Come on, lift up your hands and give the Lord a praise and put your hands together and bless the name of God. I'm going to ask Bishop Mulgrave to come and to greet. He's coming for the very first time. With him is Elder Bogle. God bless you and Elder uh, Evans and Hudson. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord for them. And Sister Winsome. Where's Sister Winsome? Oh, the General Secretary of the church. Come on, put your hands together for her done so much work together and your others all the people of the church of higher dimension please stand look at that Woo! Woo! isn't that wonderful hallelujah and of course we have brother Akeem who is always here we adopt him 
Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, lift your hands in the sanctuary and give the Lord a praise. Shout a hallelujah praise tonight. Jump up on your feet and shout hallelujah. Shout it out of your belly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the sanctuary. I greet you tonight in Jesus' name. It is actually not my first time here. The last time I came, we had children's night last year in convocation. And then we decided that this year we want to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. And so we journeyed in our numbers. Bus load, car load, van load, ever load to be here tonight because greater grace has been uh, graceful to us. Praise the Lord. Greater grace has been a tower of strength to the apostolic ministries of higher dimensions. And so we are here as part of the kingdom. We are kingdom citizens. We're just in another location in the kingdom. We are apostolic people. Baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Do I have a witness tonight? Yes, living holy and righteous. Can somebody say, called unto holiness. Called unto holiness. Church of our God. Purchased of Jesus. Redeemed by his blood. Called from the world. And its idols to flee. Can I have a witness tonight? Call from the bondage of sin to be free. Somebody say holiness. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord is a watchword. Oh, sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. And when we get excited in God, the protocols turn back away. Sit down. Greetings, Bishop Dr. C.A. Holsworth and the Board of Directors of Greater Grace Temple and all the bishops here and all God's wonderful ministers. This beautifully sounding choir. Come on, clap the choir tonight. And my elder said the music is ripe. The musicians are sounding good. I greet you tonight in Jesus' name. All of God's wonderful people from your varied places and in your respective places I greet you tonight in Jesus' name I'm here to fellowship as a kingdom citizen just to worship the Lord tonight in the beauty of holiness and all those who came with me tonight heaven bless you heaven bless you let us join with our family and worship God tonight like we've never worshipped before one kingdom worshipping one king amen Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for Bishop. We're going to get him to come back here. Another time to deliver the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bishop Brown. Amen. Is here from Glory Carriers. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Bishop. Yes. He's been here more than once. Yes. Oh, yes. Praise God. Amen. So happy to have you. Bishop Martin from Fellowship Apostolic. Put your hand together for him. Please come, Bishop. Please come. Bishop Barton is not just coming here tonight, but recently he celebrated how many years? 89 years. Come on, put your hand together. Bless the name of the Lord. And he's looking young and fit. Come on and give God a praise and put your hand together. Bless the name of the Lord. He's, we're family. We're family. He's my brother in law. And his daughter, Denise, my niece, is here as well. Amen. 
Don't know who else is here. Any more family members here? Only two of you? Right. But last night, yesterday, we had two more member, family members at the breakfast. So we are a big family. Amen? And I wanted to put your hand together for 89 years of... <laughs> Bishop, greet us. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> I just want to thank God for the privilege of being here tonight. I, I intended to be here from the start, but I was somewhat hindered. I had uh, things that I had no control over, but I had planned to be here, but I was not able to make it. But I'm glad to be here tonight. I just want to greet everyone in their respective place. I am not acquainted with many names, but I... I want to greet, especially greeting to Bishop Holder, Bishop Williams, and all the other bishops, and just about everyone in the building. God has been good, and they're good to me. And you know, at my age, I just want to thank God. Amen. Still are able to do things for myself, move around, still drive, and still do everything. And I say, count it a blessing. And you know, the Bible, the uh, Apostle uh, Peter said, remind us that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, not in heaven, the places. Yes, he, he said, he has begotten us again to a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead to an inheritance, one that shall never perish or fade away. And it is reserved in heaven for those of us who put our trust in him. Praise God. And I want you to hold fast your inheritance. Do not sell it. Do not exchange it. Don't give it away. It is a pearl of greatest price. Praise God. We are reminded that we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. Now the power may not be of us, but be of him. I really salute Bishop Holdreth, a man that is not selfish. He has been a great source of inspiration to us at Grace, at Fellowship. He, you know, I just pray for day that God will continue to bless him with health and strength. I don't know where he gets it from. I told him all the while that he's everywhere and he's sown tonight just like um, he was 20 years ago. I'm praying, sir. And, you know, as we talk, um, you are a source of inspiration to us. And we, you had my continued prayer. That God will continue to bless you. I know you are, are, are everybody's person. <laughs> you are not a selfish person. We have been blessed by you at fellowship. And God bless you and continue to grant you years and health and strength in Jesus. Put your hand together and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Elder Cole, you have to come this way. And you're, you're my surprise tonight. I wasn't expecting you, but I wanted to come and even say two words. Please, come. And let me give you a little story. You don't mind me telling a story. He came and they stole all of his clothes. So he wasn't able to put on his... But we take him anyhow. Yes. You're well-dressed, man. You're well-dressed. Just a greeting. Just greeting. Praise the Lord, saints. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Believe it or not, it's been a while. Today was meant to be. It was ordained. And I'm glad to be here. Bishop, I thank you, sir. I want to report back to heaven tonight about our bishop. I want to report to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. That his kingdom, glory be to God, sir, as, let me put it this way, the kingdom business, I'm going to report to you that it is strong. It is strong because you lead and you defend the kingdom of God. And tonight, I just want to commend you, sir, for your stalwart, your statementship, and the office you carry, that Jesus is pleased with you tonight. You don't have to pump us up no more. 
God is with you. And the Bible says when he is with you, no power, no power can form against you. So tonight, I'm just glad to be present in the house of the God with God's beautiful people. I'm just here tonight looking like this. I'm not usually look like this. I'm not playboy. I'm not, I'm not playing around. I just lost all my clothes where I was. And I, I, this is all I got left. So I'll I be wearing this for the next nine days. <laughs> glory be to God. But, you know, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. It's been a while. And like I said, it's been probably about nine years or so I haven't been here. But I thank God that he lead me back here tonight. And I see a lot of my good friends, you know, uh, I don't want to forget the, the, the pastors and the dignitary here. I just commend you all, sir, in the name of Jesus, that God bless you all. Glory be to God. Pastors, bishop, whoever you are in the ministry, glory be to God. I see a lot of my friends, old friends here. Some I don't see. I don't know. We went through a trauma for the past four or five years. Some probably have gone out home, but I'm still here and I'm thank God. And those that remain, I just want to encourage you all tonight that keep the faith and continue to press on because God ain't finished with you yet. May God bless every one of you tonight. From the choir, glory be to God. You have the best choir in the universe and it's always the same. So I just thank God for everyone. And may God bless you all. I don't want to leave my wife out. Glory be to God. She's shy, but I just want to... Um, I don't want to go home and try to sleep in the pillow tonight. And she kicked me to the curb. I'm just here to celebrate. Yesterday was my birthday. And that's one of the reasons why we're here today. And may God bless her. I thank God for 44 years with her. So I'm just... Celebrate. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know your wife was here, but we're so happy to have her in this house. Come on. I want you to stand and give her a greater grace temple. Welcome. Come on, lift up your hands and give God a praise. Stand to your feet and give her a greater grace. Welcome. Yes. These are some of the nicest people you will ever meet. Come on and bless God. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. And uh, we have to give you some clothes. You can't stay nine days and that's clothes. We have to give him some clothes. Come on, lift your hands and give God a praise. And put your hand together and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are serious about that. God bless you. God bless you. What a time we're having. What a time we're having. Pastor Lee, your church is all, the name of your church is near to mine. You know. Greater, greater what? And greater grace. Come. Two minutes. Praise the name of the Lord. Put your hand together for Pastor Lee. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. It's good to be here tonight in convention 2024 at Greater Grace. We are Greater Apostolic Christ Temple Ministries. All the way there in Central Village. We have a couple of members here. And we thank God for those who are here. Amen. My good trumpeter, Elder Marshall. And amen on the keys there. Brother Gerald and Deacon Lee. But God bless you, Bishop. The kingdom has come for such a time as this. And I thank God that I'm a kingdom citizen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Sister Winsome, we can make you come into the house and I say something. Yes, we've been working together for such a long time. Two minutes. Put your hand together for the woman of God as she comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we show the hallelujah praise in the house tonight? Shout a hallelujah praise if you're happy to be here. Shout the hallelujah praise if you're happy to be here. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his name. I am happy to be here. 
Praise his name. I just want to extend greetings to Bishop Holsworth. Praise the name of Jesus all. Our bishops and elders and pastors on the restroom, I greet you in Jesus. In Jesus. Pastor Roden, I greet you in Jesus' name. Happy to see you. Pastor Valerie, I am happy to see you. Praise the name. We're coming from for praise the name of Jesus and I'm happy to see you in the house of the Lord one more time and all our choir praise his name our musicians we're happy to be here from sea air the apostolic ministries of higher dimensions praise the name of Jesus and elder Bishop Holsworth has been a very strong strong support and the greater grace family and so we are excited praise the name of jesus we made it from last year praise his name we decided that we would be here this year at this time and god has been good to us he has kept us alive and well and we are here praise his name shout out a hallelujah praise i just love to give god the highest praise can you just shout it with me hallelujah praise the name of jesus Put your hands together for Sister Winsome. Amen. She's the General Secretary of the Amen Apostolic Church of Higher Dimensions. Praise God. Hallelujah. The family of the preacher is here. Yes. Put your hand together for the preacher's family. His dear wife, Sister Maxwell, is here. Come on, make her welcome. Come on, put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask her to come, and I'm sure you want to hear how she sound. Right? Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Welcome, Sister Maxwell. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Somebody just shout hallelujah in the house. Oh, yes, God is good, and I am so grateful that he has brought me from Florida all the way here to worship with you, to lift up the name of Jesus, and I'm so glad to be in the house. I greet all of you in your respected places, each and every one of you. I'm so glad everyone was so welcoming. Everyone was so loving to me, and I am so grateful that we are able able to be here and share in this worship experience. I'm looking forward to a word from the Lord. Amen. Are you looking for a word from the Lord? Come on. Are you looking for a word from the Lord? Yes. Yes. Come on. Are you looking for a word from the Lord? Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know one thing about this man to my right. One thing I know is that he does not just preach the word of God, but he lives the word of God. And I am so glad year after year he has been invited here to be with you all. And I have not been able to come and to share in the experience. And so I am so glad that this year I am able to hear my husband husband preach in this country in Jamaica and so I know if he does not do anything else tonight I know that he is going to preach so when he gets up I need you to pray for the preacher because somebody in the house needs a word from God come on put your hands together and bless the Lord bless the Lord put a, come on put your hands together and bless the Lord Amen. So we thank the Lord. and Amen. God bless you, Ella Murdoch. Your time. Those who have not mentioned, those of us who are here already, amen, forgive me tonight for not mentioning you again. God bless you. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, let me, let me big up the, our choir. They have been doing a wonderful job since the beginning of this convocation and I, I, I have learned to appreciate good singing for obvious reasons. You, you'll understand if I try. But, but, but <coughs> I do make a joyful noise unto the Lord sometimes. But that is what it amounts to, a joyful noise. 
But, but, but I want you to put your hands together for a choir. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and we are not tired yet. We are not tired yet. I said we are not tired yet. Because we are going to worship God some more. Worship must, we must expend ourselves in the worship of God. Worship must pull from us everything. The Bible says of Jacob that in his last days, he worshipped the Lord leaning on his staff. It wasn't enough just to lie down and worship. If it, was, if it was the last thing that he was going to do, it was going to pull from him everything. And our worship of God must pull from us everything. We, we, we must not hold anything back in reserve. God demands our best. He demands our all. Can I invite you to stand with me? We are going to worship God some more. And no, I'm not going to be singing. It's offering time. It's offering time. I was going to, I, I was going to attempt something, but... It's offering time. I said it's offering time. Somebody ought to be excited. I said you should be excited. Everybody is standing with me. If you're able to stand, I'm going to invite you to stand. If you're challenged, if you're nursing a child, we can appreciate. But if you're able to stand with me on the balcony, I'm going to invite you to stand. We're not tired yet. Touch the person beside you and tell him, I'm not tired yet. I still have something to give to God. And our pastor, Pastor Anne-Marie Rohn is coming. Praise the name of the Lord and men, brothers, men. Remember, you, you, you made a commitment earlier. Uh, it's, uh, I'm advocating for the women, for the ladies. <laughs> but we made a commitment earlier. And we are going to back it up with action. Pastor Roden, in Jesus' name. Can we praise the Lord convocation? Can we shout hallelujah? Bless the name of the Lord. You may be seated for a short while. I have a very important job to do tonight, and I don't want to take a lot of time. All the persons who were in, in Portmore yesterday, could I just see you stand on your feet? You can't stand on anything else. Please stand up if you were in Portmore yesterday morning at the breakfast. Were you impressed with what you saw? What you experienced yesterday? Come on, give a hallelujah shout so that everybody knows. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Be seated. I heard Bishop tell us today that that building has cost us $120 million and still climbing. All right? And so you know that if we are going to go anywhere, we need to get some money. And so what I'm here to do tonight is to collect some of that to help defray the costs and also to help us to complete the building. It not finished yet, you know? Lovely building, but it not finished. And I need some funds from you. I'm going to ask everybody, just make up your mind. We are in convocation. Greater Grace needs you. We thank you for coming all the way from sea air. Bless the Lord. Um, Bishop Mulgrave and all our ministers on the rostrum from far and near. My very good friends have developed good relationships. Right, Bishop Barton? With every one of you. And I just want to thank God and your wives and your members and ministers. Sisters, God bless you. Tonight I'm asking, I'm asking all the pastors, ministers ah, in this place tonight to give me, and it's going to be quick. I only need 200 U.S. dollars. Woo! That's $30,000 from each pastor, bishop, minister in the house tonight. And I'm not joking, because here is my receipt. Here is my receipt. Could you stand for me, pastors, bishops? Just stand for me. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On your honor. Amen, amen, amen. I have already given my receipt, my, my, my 200 US dollars. $30,000. Put your hands together and clap me. Clap me, clap me, clap me, clap me, clap me. Amen. And I am asking, the machine is right here. Sister Barbara, please come. Please come, Sister Barbara. Let them see the machine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the technology. Can you just say hallelujah? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I'm just 
asking you to do this for me quickly. Persons in the congregation, members, ministers, all, I just need $5,000 from you as well. $5,000. Hallelujah. We're going to do this tonight. Bless the name of the Lord. Um, never will a rock cry out in our place. Hallelujah. We are going to praise God, not only with our singing, but also with our substance. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Ah, oh, hallelujah. As soon as you get that receipt, Pastor Walker, could you just come help me so that we can do a running total of where we are. Hallelujah. Here is mine. Bless the name. Bishop, um, Brother Cole, Deacon Cole, I thank God for you. Take it out of that bucket for me right now. I need to count it. Hallelujah. Not yet. And I want to say, Deacon Cole, not to worry. You are in Jamaica where your size is here. I was in Singapore where the people are all of Chinese descent and I lost my luggage. I had no clothes except what was on my back. And I had a conference to attend Monday morning. I went into the stores, and when I couldn't find my size, I just stood up and started to bawl. Really bawl, because I've been wearing these clothes. And then, what do I do? I thought I would find it. Somebody saw me crying. Somebody heard my cry, and somebody saw my cry, and directed me to say, over there, we have some oversized clothes. Imagine me, oversized. And I went and I got something to put on it. The, 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 the dress and the shoes were not the colors that I wanted. Green dress and the burgundy shoes. But I got clothes to wear to the conference. Don't you worry. It is well. Can somebody say, it is well? Yes. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for me as yet? Any receipt coming? Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One is there, I gather. Bishop is, okay, uh, this is one, Count Bishop's own as well, hallelujah, as soon as you get the receipts, just bring them for me, ladies down there, you have some $200 for me, ministers, ministers, you have $100, just bring it for me, please, bless the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, I have some friends down there, Deacon Cole, my friend, hallelujah, oh, it is here, all right, bless the Lord. And my good friend, Pastor Ellerine Dixon, clap her for me. Clap her, clap her, clap her. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, so the, the target for the ladies is a huge one. And I want you to remember Sister Holdsworth in a very special way. Sister Holdsworth has set a trend here in Greater Grace. The men run behind us where offering is concerned. We run behind them for everything else in trying to support them and helping them and doing things for them. But where the offering is concerned, in convocation, Sunday night, the men run behind us trying to catch us up. And we are not going to break that trend tonight, ladies. We're not going to break it tonight. Can I hear amen? amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How much we gone, Sister Valerie? All right, that's 65,000 far away from, from our target. $350,000 we are, we are looking for. Could you, could you just add, add 150 to that for me? 150 Jamaica, thousand Jamaican dollars. All right, we're coming on, we're coming on, we're coming on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Yes, yes, we are coming on. The, the, the numbers are growing over there. Never will a rock cry out in my place. Oh, no. cry out in my place. He's worthy of all my praise. Never will a rock cry out in my place. He's worthy of all my praise. Never. Never. 
never, never, Disappointed you don't know that song, eh? Or is it that I can't sing anymore? A fool in myself. Oh my God. We're going to ask the congregation to stand at this time. And I, I know we're going to do it because I see the line over there. And just stand for me everywhere because we are going to be worshiping God in song right now. And the choir ministers are going to ask you to come with the 5,000s and the 2,000s. Ah, uh, 1,000 and whatever you have, just come. Everybody, please stand everywhere. Please stand everywhere. If you have feet and can stand, just stand and let's praise the Lord. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you tonight for what you have done. We thank you for bringing your people together in this place. God, we are worshiping, we are praising, we are giving honor to your matchless name. Oh God, we ask that you will accept the offering that we bring. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for providing for us that tonight we are able to give an offering to your name and into the kingdom. Thank you for bringing us in. Thank you for giving us work to do. Thank you, Lord God, for taking our service, oh God, and consecrating it for your use. We say thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So, as the choir ministers, how much? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you so much for what you have done. And those of you who are sitting, we just ask you to be obedient to the call right now. If you can stand any at all, please stand. And we ask you also to march out and give God praise that you have feet and you can stand. Can I just ask everybody who can stand just to do that now as the choir ministers. God bless you.
I said the best is yet to come. Touch somebody beside you and tell them the best is yet to come. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. I have a feeling in my heart. There have been some troubling moments, but I have a feeling. There's been some storm in my life, but I have. I have a feeling that the best is yet to come. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm excited. I want to have a way. I said, I'm excited. That the best is yet to come. Just before I hand over this microphone, just remain standing with me. Remain standing with me. Praise the name of the Lord. Just before I hand over this microphone, I want to remind you of the upcoming Mastering Manhood Conference uh, training session. And to register, moving fast, to register. I want to invite you to go to www.masteringmanwoodworkshop.net to register. We'll be focusing on mastery, spiritual relationship with God, marriage, relationship with your spouse, money and wealth, and muscle, men's wellness. Praise the name of the Lord. Men, we cannot afford to miss it. It will be on April 13th. And so I want to invite you to conference at, at the Greater Grace Temple Conference Center. And if, you're not, if you haven't been there yet, it's a good chance to go see it. But that's not the only reason why you're going. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and for persons who are interested, I want to invite you to contact, contact Pastor Joseph Reed. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Bishop McGregor has been doing a wonderful job with the choir. We call the names and, we, and, and some of, but, but I want to big you up. And big up the choir again. Praise the name of the Lord. Big up my good friend, Pastor Lee. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor Lee, we, I, we did some training sessions here. A, a few, just before COVID. It was COVID that interrupted the session. We had two more. It was on evangelism. And, and so we built a relationship from then. They were a part of the training. And so, it's an, every time I'm going to, to a trouble, troublesome time, he always contacts me. And it's not that I'm, in, I'm, I'm trying to tell him anything. He just shows up. He just touches base with me. And I thank you, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, it's time for the word. Somebody said word. It's time to hear from God. And I'm going to invite at this time to introduce our speaker, Overseer Scarlett is coming. Pastor William, Bishop Williams is coming, praise the name of the Lord, to introduce the speaker at this time. Somebody shout word. Uh, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's time for the word of the Lord. Pastor Daniel Maxwell was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. He's a seventh of 11 children of Rupert and the late Marie Moore Maxwell. Accepting the call of ministry at a tender age, Daniel completed his credentials for ministry, serving in several capacities, including youth minister, national youth evangelist, and national adjutant. In 2003, Daniel completed his bachelor's degree in sociology and criminology from Florida Southern College. In 2006, Daniel went on to complete his master's degree from Troy University, majoring in management. Currently, Pastor Maxwell is an adjunct professor for Polk State College, Southern New Hampshire University, and the University of Arizona. He's married to the love of his life, Lady Kay Maxwell, and together they share three wonderful daughters. Is the pastor of Lighthouse of Christ located in Winter Haven, Florida. I want us to welcome Pastor Daniel Maxwell to this floor immediately after the choir minister. We're going to ask you to stand again and put your hands together for a man of a great God, Pastor Daniel Maxwell and the Holy Ghost.
give the Lord a praise. Come on, give the Lord a praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. And he's worthy of the praise. Can we give God a praise for the choir? Amen. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We honor the Lord for being here at the Greater Grace 2024 Convocation. Can we give the Lord a praise? How many are glad to be here? Amen. We thank and praise God. Amen for our being here. We are so delighted to be in the midst of God's people. How many of you can feel the spirit of the Lord moving in this place? Amen. We honor, amen, your presiding prelate, Dr. Bishop Holsworth. Can we give God a hand praise for this powerful man of God? I met him in 2018. And what was notable about that, I met him a couple of weeks after my mother had died. And I had agreed to come here. And when my mother passed, I changed my mind because I was grieving. And I had two pastors show up at my church that Sunday morning and they said, you cannot miss this. They left their churches and drove to my church and said, I know you're grieving, but you have to come. And boy, am I glad that I was obedient and I came. You all really don't know what you have in this great man of God. You really don't know what you have. If I can be honest with you, I did not come to preach. I had come just to learn. I was just looking forward to hearing the wisdom that you all get all the time. And I am so glad that he's a man that is not selfish. Every time I see him, he is pouring and pouring and pouring into somebody. And so I just want to salute this great man of a great God. Can we stand and just salute this great visionary? I, I, I know what I'm going to say is a little controversial, but I'm going to say it. I, I know you, you may be seated. You know, within the apostolic church, there's a great debate whether or not, we talked about it the other day, whether we have apostles today or, or not. And as long as I've been in the apostolic church, that's been a debate. I agree with Bishop Williams. I'm not hung up on the title. I'm looking at the work. This man has an apostolic anointing to build the kingdom of God. When I left here my last time in 2019, he was building a building. <laughs> I come back, he said, I sold that building and we're building something else. And through COVID, most churches are shutting down. Greater grace is building up. And you ought to give God praise for that. And so we honor him today. I also want to honor uh, the man who's responsible for me being here in the person of Bishop Wayne Williams. Amen. He is an ambassador for the kingdom of God. The Lord is using him in this season to connect ministries. And it's because of him that I'm here. I, on the last time I was here, I brought Bishop Stevenson here. 
This year, I brought Minister Lampley here, and he has just been a conduit for ministry, and I can't wait to see what God's going to do in his life. And so we salute him as well and his precious wife in Jesus' name to the illustrious Bishop Dr. Benjamin Carter. Amen. A man that I have known for many years. We honor him. Amen. I want to also honor uh, two powerful men of God, Overseer Scarlett and Overseer Stennett. Can we give God praise for them? Uh, I have some good friends that I've met and tried to stay in contact with. I want to honor Pastor Roden and Pastor Walker and Pastor Reed. Uh, a new young man of God, Pastor Ennis, amen. Powerful young man of God. And to all of these bishops and pastors and elders, can we give God praise for them? To Minister Lampley and to the delegation from Avon Park, we honor you, amen. I'm so glad to have my wife here for the first time at Greater Grace, Lady Candace Maxwell, amen. I feel so much better that she's here. Amen. She came. I was so happy. I ran up to her and just kissed her. I missed her so much. Amen. She is the bearer of my secrets, the mother of my three daughters. As we call it, I run the pink palace. I'm the only man there. Amen. And so I give honor to her. Amen. I also want to honor some special guests who are here. Uh, I met them for the first time. She invited her family who is here in Jamaica. And so I just want to acknowledge uh, Uncle Adrian is here. Uncle Meekly is here. Um, her grandmother, Grandmother Mavis is here. Amen. And her aunt, Aunt Marjorie is here. Can you all just stand so they can see who you are? They travel the distance to be here tonight. Can we give God a hand praise for them? Thank you all for coming. They greeted me and have treated me so well. I've heard about them for years and it was a blessing to see them in the house of the Lord. And we greet everyone here tonight by your respective call and caliber. Amen. We are just giving God praise. I just want to know, do we have any kingdom citizens in the building tonight? Do I have anybody that's a part of the kingdom? Amen. And we just thank and praise God for this great move of God, this great convocation. Amen. And I'm not going to prolong the time, but if you have your Bibles, I want you to stand with me. I want to read two passages of scripture. The first is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 16 through 21. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 21. And I want to read Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 4. When you have it, say amen. Amen. We also honor the Lord for these phenomenal choir members. Can we give God praise for them and the musicians and... And to all who have traveled far and near, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want to read verse 16 through 21. And it reads, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Acts chapter 1 verse 1 through 4. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do.
do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining, I want you to underline that, to the kingdom of God. Precious Savior, we thank you tonight for this divine appointment. We praise you for this moment. Oh God, tonight we pray that God that you would speak through these lips of clay. Father, I have not come this many miles to entertain nor to emotionalize, but I've come to rightly divide your word of truth. Father, I pray that you speak expressly to this august body of believers. Father, I pray that God, you demonstrate your word in a powerful way. Father, let us leave here empowered, oh God, and strengthened because of your word. Set your power and your anointing in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the message tonight is entitled, you've got one more credit left. You've got one more credit left. You may be seated. Our theme for tonight is the resurrection, the redemption of the kingdom. All this week we have learned through the speakers about the kingdom of God. How many of you have learned a lot about the kingdom of God? I think this theme is appropriate for times such as this. As I begin to, to listen and as I begin to pray, I believe the Lord would have me to build upon what has been taught. I subscribe to you tonight that Jesus' message of the kingdom was not an ambiguous concept. But when Jesus discussed the kingdom, it was more, from my understanding, a scholastic curriculum. It was something that he taught and he taught it with precision. Well, how can you say that? If you go to the book of Acts chapter 1, what we just read, the Bible says that Jesus had brought together his apostles. It was men that he had chosen after he had revealed to them that he was yet alive. And the Bible says, if you read it in its context, he didn't just bring them together to have a conversation. But for 40 days, he put them through a certification process. The Bible said what he taught them were things that were pertaining to what? The kingdom of God. It wasn't something related to the current events the issues of the time. No, he sat them down and for 40 days he went line by line teaching them about the kingdom. Now, my question to you is after Jesus in the natural had left off the scene, who did he leave in charge of the church? He left the apostles with the help of the Holy Ghost to give direction to the church. But before
before he left them there, he put them through training. So they all had the same information. They all had the same curriculum. They all had the same understanding. Now, there's something that I want you to understand about the kingdom. The kingdom curriculum is in two phases. The Bible said when he came and taught them, it was in two ways. It was all that he began both to do, that's number one, and the second half was to teach. If we are truly operating in kingdom, there are two things we must have. There is what's called the didactic of the kingdom. That's the teaching of the kingdom. And the second thing we must have is the demonstration of the kingdom. So you must have both the didactic and the demonstration. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? If you only have the didactic, you only have 50%. If you only have the demonstration, you only have 50%. But Jesus did and he taught. So if we are to operate the level of the kingdom there are things we must teach and things we must do somebody shout praise the Lord what is the message of the kingdom we talked about this if I can put it a different way the message of the kingdom Jesus was teaching the apostles to do what Adam had failed to do What was the command for Adam? To be fruitful and multiply and have what? Dominion. That's what the kingdom is about. It's about having dominion. Adam failed the curriculum. He did not fulfill the perfect will of God. So what the first Adam could not accomplish... The second Adam had to come and fix what the first Adam couldn't do. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God for the second Adam. Kingdom is about us having dominion in the earth. But I want to challenge your theology for a moment. What makes Jesus qualify to teach about the kingdom? We never ask ourselves that question. That's an important question. Why does Jesus get to take men for 40 days and teach them about the kingdom? Well, as a college professor, I want to answer that. In order to teach a curriculum in an institution, you must demonstrate a mastery of the subject matter. I can't be a professor because I want to be a professor. I can't call myself a subject matter expert because it makes me sound good. I have to prove my mastery. Jesus had to have the right resume in order to teach on the kingdom. So he had to demonstrate what dominion was can the church say praise the Lord so what he had to do is he had to show that he had and possessed dominion and not just dominion but he had to demonstrate supreme dominion look at your name and say supreme dominion what is supreme dominion well for those of you who understand the judicial system I'm going to talk about the American judicial system in the American judicial system it really is a three leveled system at the bottom you have what's called your district court and so if you have a grievance you go to the district court if you don't like how they rule 
you can appeal what they say. And that appeal goes to the next level called the appellate court. Are you following me? If they render a judgment that you don't like, you can appeal it to the next level. That next level is called the Supreme Court. But here's the thing. You cannot take your first grievance directly to the Supreme Court. You've got to start at the bottom and work your way to the top of the pyramid. Once the decision reaches the Supreme Court, nobody can overturn the ruling. What am I saying? Jesus is a supreme God, which means he had to have dominion in three areas. That means he had to be supreme in the heavens, he had to be supreme in the earth, and he had to be supreme in hell. I wish I had a witness here. Ah, Colossians 1 and 18 says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he might have what? Preeminent. That's where we get the word supreme. He's not just the God of heaven. He's not just the God of earth. He's not just the God of hell, but he's the supreme preeminent God. Uh, he was in heaven. Heaven was where his throne was. And he showed that even though he already had his throne there, he had somebody try to come and challenge him by the name of Lucifer. And when Lucifer came, he showed him, I'm a supreme God. And he cast Lucifer down because he's the God of the heavens. And then after that, he came through 42 generations on the earth. And when he got here, the Bible said that the wind and the seas obeyed him. That demons obeyed him they asked the question what manner of man is this he had power in the earth but here's the thing he could not be a supreme god until he had all three which one are we missing we talked about heaven we talked about earth well, what's the third one hell but this was a problem. Let me tell you why this was a problem. This was a problem because uh, in order to go to hell, you have to go down the hallway of death. I wish I had a witness here. The only way you can get to hell, you've got to go down the, the death hallway. But how do you take a God of life, a God of creation, how do you take him and you put him in death? He created it. How, how, how do you get a God who created the sun and the moon and the star? How do you get him? How do you find? And he answered the question in John. He said, no man can take my life. I, I, I know that the, the, the Pharisees don't like me and the Sadducees don't like me. But the only way I can go to hell, I've got to lay down my own life. Tell your neighbor, he laid down his life. There was no bullet that could kill him. There was no sword that could pierce him. There was no missile that could destroy him. The only way he could do it, he had to lay down. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad he laid down. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. When he got there, I can imagine the demons were saying, did you hear Jesus showed up down here? Oh my God, they were looking around. And I bet there was a celebration because they couldn't figure out how to get him there. But after three days of celebration, uh, the earth began to shake. The moon turned into blood. The dead came into the city of Jerusalem. What's going on? on God was once dead but he said I am the God who was dead but now I'm alive forevermore look at your name and say what a mighty God he gets down there and when he 
gets down there, somebody who, who got, before he leaves, in my mind, I see a little hook by the door of hell. And he goes over and says, before I leave, let me grab these. He took the keys. Oh, my God. He said, before I leave here, I need those from you. Who's going to stop God from taking the keys? Who's bad enough to stop the almighty God? I imagine everybody step back while he grabbed the keys. Dominion in the heavens. Dominion in the earth. Dominion in hell. Look at your neighbor and say the supreme God. I serve the supreme God. Nothing can stop him. Nothing can slow him down. Nothing can compare to him. Nothing is in his category. He is the supreme God. And because he's supreme, nobody can overturn what he does. He's a sovereign God. He does what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, when he wants to do it. Look at your neighbor and say, I serve the supreme God. That's why I don't understand why the church worries, the church frets. When you serve a supreme God, if the doctor says no, take it to the supreme God. Oh my God, tell your neighbor, I'm taking it to, to the supreme judge. I know what the lawyer said, but I'm taking it to God. You have to understand. That's the reason why he's able to talk about kingdom. Because if you talk about heaven, he can tell you, I've been there. If you talk about earth, he can say, I've been there. And even if you're talking about the hell you're going through, he can say, I. God knows what you're going through because he's been there. But here's the thing. So Jesus is now teaching this curriculum as the master professor for 40 days, teaching about the kingdom of God. As I begin to think about that, Jesus was demonstrating what kingdom is for us. So just like Jesus had to have dominance in three realms, so must you. If you're talking about having dominance in the kingdom, you are incomplete unless you have all three experiences. And the problem with the church is, in our curriculum to graduate, you are one credit short. What do you mean, Pastor Max? So let me explain that. Let's go over those three realms again. So, Again, we talk about curriculum. There are two parts. Didactic, the teaching, then demonstration, right? Now, when we get into demonstration, you need three levels, right? Heaven, earth, hell. You're some good students. You're, you're really good. Now, look at this. Look at this. We, as the church, as believers, we have heaven experience. Ephesians chapter 2 and 5, the Lord has raised us up together and made us to sit together. Where? Tell your neighbor, I got heaven experience. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the heaven experience. Also, if you have the Holy Ghost, according to Mark chapter 16 and 17, these signs shall follow them that what? believe what were the signs for for demonstration you didn't receive the Holy Ghost as Bishop said to speak in tongue there are people who don't have the Holy Ghost that speak in tongue we get that confused oh they spoke in tongue the devil can speak in tongues <laughs> your tongues don't impress me what I'm impressed with is when you can demonstrate the spirit oh hallelujah 
how do I know that these signs shall follow them that believe? How do I know you have it? Because you're able to cast out a devil. You're able to speak in tongues and to drink in the deadly thing, to take up serpents and it will not harm you. God gave you the Holy Ghost, his spirit to have dominion in the earth. He gave you the Holy Ghost that if any sick be among you, you can lay hands on the sick. If you get in harm's way, you can come out of it. That's what the Spirit of God is for. So the reason why we have the Spirit is it restores us back to our original design. Remember, in the garden, who did Adam have dominion over? The birds of the air? Those that were on the land and the fish of the sea. When you get the Holy Ghost, God gives you back your dominion. That's why when the devil comes after you, you can say in the name of Jesus, shut your mouth and back off and that devil will leave you. Why? Because you have dominion from heaven. Somebody shout praise the Lord. But here's the problem. You have heaven experience. You have earth experience. Tell your neighbor you're missing a credit. What we have done from my vantage point in the church, within the apostolic church, and I've traveled extensively, we are very good at the didactic. We can tell you why you must be baptized in Jesus' name. We can tell you why you need the Holy Ghost. We can tell you why we take the Holy Sacrament or the Lord's Supper. We can explain why you must wash feet. We can go over the scripture about why you must live holy. But the challenge is we are all book knowledge. We can quote scripture. We can be very deep and theological. We can use harmony. And, and we can go through this text in the scripture and, and we can exegese a text but what's missing in the church is not Bible quotas. What's missing in the church is not scripture memory but what we're missing in the church is those who know how to demonstrate the spirit of the living God. It should not be that you can remember all the scriptures but your marriage is in the mess I'm not getting any help here you know all the scriptures but yet you got sickness in your body and your house is messed up the devil is a liar I know the word but I also have the power tell your neighbor you've got to have the power uh, yes the church is book smart we can read the text but when's the last time you went down to the hospital and laid your hand on somebody and said in the name of Jesus I command you to get up out of this sick bed by the power of the kingdom of God God didn't call you to memorize the scripture he called you to have in the earth look at your neighbor say I'm one credit short I'm one credit short oh my god I'm going to say something that's going to be controversial, but let me explain it, okay? I'm giving you a warning. It's going to sound controversial, but let me explain what I'm going to say. There is a hell for the believer. There is a hell not just for the sinner but for the believer because if you didn't have hell you would be one credit short and you couldn't graduate has anybody here almost graduated but there was something you had to do in order to meet the criteria 
That's how it is. If you just have the Holy Ghost and you have the word, uh, you're still one credit short. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to go back and get your credit. Tell your neighbor, say, you got to go back and get a credit. Well, what is the hell for the believer? For the sinner, hell is Sheol. It is a place. But for the believer, hell is an experience. Jesus went to hell so you could go through hell. You didn't get that. Jesus went to hell so you could go through hell. Now, if he wouldn't have went to hell, you would have to go to hell. But because he went to hell, you can go. The good thing about going through something is there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. You may go through hell, but you won't stay there. Oh, glory be to God. And we've got to start talking to the church and letting the church know all that live godly shall suffer persecution. They're going to lie on you. They're going to plot against you. They're going to set you up, but you're going to only go through it. The sinner is there eternally, but yours is temporary, but it's necessary. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to go through hell. That's the only way you're going to graduate. I know they told you every day was going to be Sunday and everybody was going to like you. But if Jesus had to deal with hell, baby, you got to deal with hell. And that's the problem of the church. As soon as trouble come, we want to backslide. I'm leaving here. I don't like it here. But if you're going to graduate, you got to be lied on. You got to be stabbed in the back. You got to have trouble. But trouble don't last. Uh, come on, touch your neighbor and say it won't last always. Because the Bible said weeping may, it may, it may, it doesn't mean it will, but it may. Why? Because hell is only temporary for the believer. You have to understand that hell is the temporary necessary. We have taught people to remember the scripture, but we haven't prepared them to demonstrate how to go through hell. Let me tell you something. Don't you know that God uses your hell? He uses your suffering. He uses your torment. We have told the lie to the church that you won't go through once you have the Holy Ghost. But if Jesus went through on this earth, you will go through. A man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they're full of laughing. They're full of dancing. They're full of joy. No, they're full of Can I tell you a little secret? I'm going to say it real low because I don't want everybody to know this. Here's the little secret. The secret is that trouble sometimes comes from God. Every time we go through that old slew foot devil, the demons of hell, the witches of hell, no, some trouble comes through Amazon down to earth. God sends it here. Well, why does God send trouble? Well, let me give you a few examples. The purpose of trouble and suffering is that trouble and hell precedes expansion. If you don't have the hell, you'll never get the expansion. That's what we don't like to hear in the kingdom. We want to, you want to hear you're going to be blessed and highly favored and the new car is coming next week. But I came all the way from Florida to tell you, you're going to go through some hell. But there's some good news. Look at your name and say, there's some good news. Glory be to God. Because in Exodus chapter 1, around verse 12, the Bible says, when Israel went through hell, the Bible says, the more that the Egyptians afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. If they were not afflicted, they would have stayed small. They would have been insignificant. 
but because of the affliction the more you afflict them the larger they got somebody shall praise the Lord the next example was Job he went through many afflictions afflictions with his family affliction with his wife affliction with his health but the Bible says that the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning tell your neighbor there is a purpose to your pain there's a purpose to your health even in the New Testament the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 that ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem in Judea and in Samaria when we read that text we read it as if it's something positive because we don't understand the full story the reason why the people of God moved from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria was because an enemy was afflicting them the Roman Empire was afflicting them and the more they afflicted them the farther they went God used the affliction of the enemy to push the gospel to the ends of the earth what am I telling greater grace you have to be afflicted because you've got to leave Kingston glory be to God Kingston is not big enough I need to see a greater grace in every parish I need to see greater grace in every state I need greater grace on every continent tell your neighbor say neighbor get ready hell is coming but the good news is upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail it may come but it won't last it may come but it won't conquer cause greater is he Oh, that's why you got to go through. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to take this course. Yeah, I know you don't want hell, but uh, there's a saying that the world has. Haters make you greater. The more haters you have. I heard Apostle Paul said, there's a messenger of Satan and it comes to buffet me. Oh, what do you mean? The more I go through what I'm going through, it's making me shine. It's making me look new. I know you want to give up, but the more you go through, the stronger you're going to get. The more you take on, the greater you're going to get. Don't leave. Hold on in hell. We don't understand that. I remember when I was working on my master's degree and I had finished all of my courses and there was one course left and they call it your capstone. What made the capstone different from all the other courses was all the other courses was just learning but the capstone you had to demonstrate God's going to send something to greater grace. He's going to force you into a miracle. He's going to force you into a blessing. I know you don't want to go through it, but Bishop, they're going to talk about you. He thinks he's doing something. Look at what he builds here. But what you don't know, those words that they speak are opening new doors for you. I want the church of the living God to know God doesn't want you to have the Holy Ghost, but God wants you to use the Holy goes how many of your family members are still in the world you got work to do I come to let greater grace know it's time to demonstrate that's why the Bible says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel what gospel the gospel of the kingdom let them know you don't have to be bound in sin you don't have to go to hell
will because Jesus already went there. You may go through it, but you won't go to it. Is there anybody here that's ready to go through the final course? Paul said when he got ready to die, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my what? He said, I can't leave here until I get through this hell. Before you die, you've got to go through this. I refuse to die without fulfilling my purpose. I refuse to die without filling up this church and building a new one. Because God said, for the promise is unto you and unto your children. Oh my God. church let me correct that the kingdom is about to go through turbulence the Lord start dealing with me in January and he start letting me know things are about to get worse and that's something when the Lord lets you know it ain't getting better you may vote in a new leader but it ain't going to get better. They can change the tax code, but it's not going to get better. Because if it got better, we would be like Lot's wife. We would start looking back. But tell your neighbor, I'm not looking back. I'm looking up. There's some place that's greater than down here. Thank you for the house, but I don't want that. Thank you for the car. I don't want that. Thank you for the title, but I don't want that. I want to go where you are. Is there anybody here that got your mind made up? Whatever it takes, I'm going to stand. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it. No matter how hot the fire is, I'm going to go through hell. There are people who will miss the kingdom because they're afraid of hell. You cannot be in the kingdom and afraid of hell. How many believers have never cast out a devil because they're afraid of hell? How many don't operate in faith because they're afraid of hell. You know what stops us from walking in the fullness of God? Fear. When Pastor Roden said, I want you to give $200, first thing I heard was, ooh. But you go to the store and spend it like that on what you want. But when you understand I have unlimited supply. You reach in your pocket and say, what I don't have, I will draw from the kingdom of God. The Lord told me to tell greater grace. It's your season of hell. No hell, no expansion. It is not going to kill you but it's going to expand you. It's going to push you out of your comfort zone. It's going to take you places that you've never been before. But he would be an unjust God to allow you to skip a class and still graduate. The kingdom is going to go through turbulence. Can I tell you something? You know when the gospel start moving at light speed? During COVID. The hell of COVID took us out of our buildings and put us in front of computer screens. And people who never came to church would open up to Facebook and they would hear what thus said the Lord. Don't tell me that God won't use hell to expand the church. 
this is just the beginning. My mission tonight wasn't to hoop and holler tonight. But the Lord told me to tell you, get ready for hell. Get ready for it. I don't want you to be nervous. The reason why I don't want you to be nervous is if I'm in hell and I happen to get stuck, my father still has. Tell your neighbor, say, don't worry about it. My daddy got me. It's time for us to stop talking and start doing. How many preachers aren't preaching? How many saints aren't praying? The Lord sent me here to tell you this is your hell season. And that's not a bad thing. But what I don't want you to do is to think that God is against you. God is for you, greater grace. But you have to finish this final course how many tonight are willing to go through you see how quiet it got if I said how many of you want a million dollars everyone would be standing but how many of you want to see the miracles of God how many of you want to see your family come in it's going to cost you it's going to cost you it's too big for bishop alone. It's too big for the overseers alone. It's too big for the pastors alone. The kingdom is going through a season of hell. But the more we are afflicted, 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 the, more we are afflicted, the greater we shall become. The Lord instructed me to teach tonight because you're going to begin to see what I said begin to unfold in the earth. You're going to see governments. We're already seeing it now. We have wars we can't stop. There are people dying of hunger and there's food all around. It's hell. It's hell. We are seeing where the government is telling us what we can't preach and what we can't believe. It's hell. And I dare not sit here and let the devil get the advantage over me. I will pray through my hell. I will preach through my hell. I will pray through my hell. But I won't die. Tell your neighbor, I won't die here. I'm getting ready to pray. We've been having church, but God is calling us to kingdom. He's about to separate the wheat. Judgment will begin at the club. Judgment is going to begin in the world. judgment is coming look at these religious leaders slowly coming down hell is here the Lord sent me to tell you it's here but the church of the living God should rejoice because if God be for us I want you to stand. Thank you, preacher. The Lord told me to talk tonight because there's another level for the church. The Bible says the apostles walked in a kingdom anointing that was so strong, they didn't have to lay hands. 
See, we look at that as if it, it, it's a fairy tale. But that's the dominion that even sickness couldn't stay. They wouldn't lay hands. They would just walk past and their shadow. Tell your neighbor, that's kingdom. We're operating in church administration. That's the level of power you should have with God. How many of you want to operate in that level? I mean, honestly, how many? Raise your hand. How many of you really want that? It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you. There's some things you're going to have to give up. Can I say this to you? I had to learn that not everybody I can fellowship with. I hope that didn't offend anybody. But what God wants to do in me, I got to be careful who deposits into me. I got to be careful of the atmospheres and the environments I walk into. Hell is everywhere. It's not just on your job. It's not just in your house. But there's hell in the church. Look at your neighbor and say, is it you? You speak in tongues, but you're still missing the last credit. You dance before the Lord, but you're still missing. You come to church every Sunday, but you're still missing. The Bible says, I'm getting ready to pass the mic, but I got to say what the Lord says, and I'm going to leave it alone. The Bible says that as the apostles went throughout Asia Minor, they got to a part around Acts chapter 16, I believe. And they got to a part that had a lot of pagan worship that was mingling in the church. But the apostles operated at such a high kingdom frequency. When they got among the heathens, the heathens said, these are they that have turned the world. When you operate in kingdom power, you turn the world on its head. That's why no weapon formed against you. The world should see you coming and get out of your way. I'm tired of church as usual. I'm tired of just coming together for conferences. I want the demonstration of the kingdom of God. Too many people are hurting. I want to see the demonstration. God is calling the church to a different level. I'm going to say this and I'm going to, I keep saying that, but I need to just Say it. I need everybody praying for Bishop. You can't have this level of anointing and wisdom and not expect fight. There are people who will smile at you and jealous of your success. They want this. This is what they want. But their tricks can't get this. You know what gets this? This. They're trying to figure out how are you getting access? He must be doing something under. That's too much money. But they don't know you have a secret account. And when you look in your account and it's not what it is, you go down and say, Lord, I just need you to deposit 
more than ever before, we have to lift him up in prayer. You don't see it because you see him every day. He can become common to you. But I came all the way from Florida to tell you, don't get too common. Don't get too common. I'm telling, don't do it. I hear whispers. Be careful. Be careful. I would not stand here and lie before you. Be careful. Take your mouth off what you don't understand. If you don't understand, ask God for understanding, but don't put your mouth on what you don't understand. I've sat down and I've listened to this man. I listen to all kinds of preachers. There's something that God has given him that is not like anybody else. You have to understand what he's telling you about the kingdom is giving you a peek into the favor of God. Hear ye him. Because it's the Lord speaking through him. Church, it's time for us to do something that's going to sound crazy. We've got to start pursuing hell. Facing the things that are difficult. You cannot conquer what you refuse to confront. As long as you run from trouble, you will never conquer it. Bishop, can, can, can I pray? Is that okay? I want to be in order. There are some of you tonight who are serious about kingdom. I don't want everybody to come. I want those who heard the voice of the Lord tonight to come. I want to pray with you. We're going to pray for those who want the Holy Ghost. But I want to pray for those who say, Pastor Maxwell, I'm tired of operating on one level. I want to operate in kingdom. I want you to come. Because I, I want to see who's really in this for the right reason. I want you to come. Because I'm going to ask the Lord to give you access to what you need. I want you to come, 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 come close. If you're not serious, I'm not mad with you. But God is going to do something on this island. And we need people who are kingdom minded. We don't need spectators. God's about to blow the wind of the Holy Ghost through this place. Make room, make room, make room, make room, make room, make room. Spread out, spread out, spread out. I feel the wind of God. I was praying. And when I was praying, I was asking the Lord, what must I do? And the Lord put fire in my hand. Didn't understand it. Never happened. He he put fire in my hand. I'm going to lay hands tonight. And these preachers are going to lay hands tonight. And some of you are going to leave here in a way that you've never left this convocation. You came here for one reason, but you're about to turn this island upside down. Those of you who are going back to Florida, you're going back different in the name of Jesus. Is everybody here who needs to be here? Is everybody here? Everybody here? Everybody here? Yeah, I feel the wind of God. Hey, Kanada Bashi. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your hands and say, Lord, Lord, lay your hand on me. Act 
activate the kingdom in me, God. Activate the kingdom. I need you to watch me. I need some ushers. I need some ushers. I need some ushers. Thank you, Jesus. I am Osia. She cannot am I sure. Jesus. Wind of the Holy Ghost. Wind of the Holy Ghost. Wind of the living God. Wind of the breath of God. Oh God, I ask you, God, to meet us here tonight. God, there's a need. God, we heard your voice. We heard your word. And God, tonight, we need something from heaven. We need something that we've never experienced before. Oh God, come on, lift those hands, lift those hands. I need somebody to pull on the heavens. Pull on the heavens. Say, Lord, even me, while you are blessing, while you are blessing in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. Thank you, Jesus. You'll never speak the same again. You'll never speak the same again. Let the fire of the living God. Let the fire of the living God. I need some ushers. I need some ushers. Follow me, follow me. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You'll never be the same again. You'll never be the same again. You'll never be the same again. Shitiabasha. Shatadabasha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where is Lady Williams? Lady Williams, I want you to come. Show my Jesus, Jesus, I am a record of a shadayaba. Record of a shako. This is what we need. We need the hand of God. We don't need just another meeting. We need the hand of God.
I want you. I want you to get in groups of two, only two. Find somebody, just two of you, and grab each other by both hands. Why two? Two is the number of evangelism. The Lord sent them out two by two. Two takes me from individual to witness. If somebody is with you, they can witness what happened. The Bible says that it is better that you have two. Because if one falls, the other can lift them up. What God is about to do in you, you're going to need a witness for this. Because I have not seen. Ear old, abashod, abashi, and abashi, abashi, abashi. I feel the vibration of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Look at that person in the eye and say, neighbor, I press into your life kingdom power. Say it again. Say, I press into your life kingdom power. I want you to say it like you mean it. I press into your life, into your money, into your mind, into your eye. I press the power of the living God. I press healing. I press deliverance into your life. You shall never be the same. You shall not think the same because the kingdom is here. The kingdom. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, release it in those hands, release power in those hands. Power of the God is of God is permeating this room right now. Come on, open up your mouth as you hold on to that hand. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Release the kingdom sound in the room. Hey, Shato Riba, Mashatole. Something is happening. Hey, yes, yes, yes. Press, press, press to hell. Press to hell. Press to hell. Mashato Rabba. Press woman. Press woman. Press. Good God Almighty. I hear a sound in the room. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. Press. My God. My God. The kingdom is active right now. The power of God is manifesting right now. Come on, in the balcony, everywhere. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Oh. Hallelujah. Come on, press. Press. Press for one more minute. Press for one more minute. Don't you leave here the same way you came. Press. Oh, God, I'm not here in the church. I'm not here in the church. Come on, open. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, Shatora, ba 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 Oh, come on, somebody stepping into new dimension right now. Somebody stepping into a fresh anointing right now. Somebody's life is turning around right now. Hey, good God Almighty. Oh, 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 oh. Even now, Lord. Ooh, oh, Even oh, now, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. My God, receive him right where you are. Receive power right where you are. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, he's doing it right now. Longing for you, Lord. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, throw those hands up. Throw those hands up. Throw those hands up. Say, oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. No, to worship you. To worship, to worship. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. To worship you. Somebody touch him right now. Come on, you can touch him right now. To worship. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. And when you don't know what to say, just say, oh, 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 oh. come on, lift this king up. Come on, lift this king up. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nobody else, Lord. Oh. Shato raba ba 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 shata. Keto shato. Ekatu shato sai. Mato riba. Pour into your servant, Lord. Pour into your bishop, Lord. Pour into him, Lord. Fresh wisdom, fresh revelation, fresh vision, fresh inspiration. Cover him under your blood. Cover everything concerning him. We speak of his health. We speak of his ministry. We cancel every diabolical assignment. We shut down the powers that be of hell. Marco Shato Riba. Give your angels charge over him now. Give your angels charge over him now. Shato Raba Baba Baba. Makato Shato. Give your angels charge, Lord. Nobody has on. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Somebody send up Judah. Somebody send up Judah. You, I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Come on, tell him, Lord, I give my life to your kingdom assignment to worship, to worship, to worship you. Is that your testimony tonight? Is that your confession tonight? And when they have no words, they just say, We surrender, we surrender. We surrender, we surrender. We surrender, we surrender. We surrender, Lord. We give it all to you, Jesus. We give it all to 
you, Jesus. We give it all to you, Jesus. One more time. Oh. Oh. put those hands together and give him a praise come on put those hands together and give him a praise come on just touch three people around you and tell them keep going through hell keep going through don't you stop in the corridors keep going through oh God Almighty thank you Lord thank you come on lift those hands right where you are truly tonight our hearts burned within us the Lord have spoken. Let the church say, Amen. We take this word tonight. Take it down, son, man. We take this word tonight. Take it out, take it out. We take this word tonight. Go through hell. Go through. Come on, just look at one pe person. Tell him, go through. Go through. Jesus went to hell. So we can go through hell. <laughs> oh God Almighty, we're blessed tonight by this awesome word. Put your hands together for the man's servant whom the Lord have used to bless our hearts so tremendously. Amen. We pray God for him to cover him, cover his ministry, continue to use him. Slip your hands in somebody's hand. We're going home. Slip your hands in somebody's hand. Praise God. Let's pray before you leave. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word that come with such precision and authority and force. That comes with demonstration and power. Father, we pray tonight that you'll grant us the power and the courage and the strength. That we will go through our hell. That we will not surrender. That we will not retreat. That we will not look to the right nor to the left. But that we will do like you for the joy that was set before you. You endure the cross. Give us the power to endure. Give us the staying power. That no matter what comes our way, God, we'll say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Father, we pray that you'll bless every heart. We pray, God, that this word will be hid in the altars of our heart. That the fall of the hear will not steal it. That it will not fall on the wayside, God. That it will fall on good, fertile ground. That it will bring forth fruit of a hundredfold in our lives. We thank you for what you've accomplished here tonight, God, through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, if you're glad or say amen. amen. Praise God. Lift your hands in the center of the Lord and shout a hallelujah praise. The Lord bless you. So keep those hands up. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord may his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. In Jesus' name church is over but the presence of the lord is not over if you feel like you want to tarry and pray still tarry and pray amen praise the name of the lord hallelujah glory to god oh!